we kept beating on him and actually I think we kind of made him mad really finally he had enough of us asking us he said you two little guys just go on back there and grab that old car and see if you can make the race you know <laughs> well, it has been said that uh, that we that we that we made the race with nitrous. Now, I, I'm not going to deny that. You know, the nitrous deal wasn't talked about for 49 years, nor did I want it talked about. But it did. So, did did you feel like it was a disservice to Dale? I did, or a disservice to the code uh, in the in the garage? <laughs> well, because <laughs> probably both. The day NASCAR and all of us associated in any way with NASCAR forget its past, that's the day we don't have any future. All right, so how did the deal for Dale to run uh, your dad's car at Charlotte come about? Was was your dad on board the whole time? Not to start with. <laughs> <laughs> so... I guess I need to tell a little bit about how we ended up with more than one race car. So we only had one race car, and it was a it was it was a Dodge. And uh, uh, Dick Brooks was driving for Junie, so he wanted to sell his Dodges off down Spartanburg. So Dad ended up making a deal with him, and we got two more race cars out of that. Now his place had been on fire, and one of them was still burned up, but one they had rebuilt. So it came home. Well, Dad's going to run it, and. Uh, I'm working on it with Dad one evening, and Dale used to come down to the shop, hang out a little bit. And of course, this is after Ralph was has already passed away, and he'd hang out. And I'm, you know, I he he just you could tell that he wanted to be a a cup driver, of course, but he was still the short track stuff and and some dirt still, I think, a little bit here and there. But he'd hang out, and he come down that one night, and I'm working on the car, and he's sitting there with me, and he says, so, "Let's talk your dad into." letting us take that old car and go to Charlotte. And I said, I, he ain't going to let us do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not. <laughs> and he said, well, ask him. So that evening when I got home, I said, uh, hey, I said, how about you let me and Dale take that old car and see if we make the race at Charlotte? He said, that boy get hurt. You know, back, <laughs> you know, back in them days, it's the, the driver, like dad's, the type of driver that dad was, all them older driver that you, you got to be older and have more experience than I mean, the young as a day are what, 18 <laughs> or younger? Yeah. But it wasn't that way back then. Now, Dale's, I think Dale Jr. might have just been born or, or was just, I don't I think, think he was even. Or seven months old. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't very old. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got a young family. And so I'm 18 or 19. Dale's, I guess, 23 or 24. I don't know. He was a few years older than me. But anyway, he comes back the next evening. He said, what'd he say? I said, he said, no, you get hurt. <laughs> he said, so he said, well, let's keep asking him. I want to do it. And I said, well, so do I. So we kept beating on him. And actually, I think we kind of made him mad, really. Finally, he had enough of us asking us. He said, you two little guys, just go on back there and grab that old car and see if you can make the race, you know. So because he figures we're not. So we jumped on that and done it and took it to the racetrack. Now I got a problem because... Dad's running too, so I got a friend of mine, Mike Smith, that you know we've known each other ever since high school, and uh, he'd been helping us. So I said, "You got to do Dad, and so I can do Dale." So we prepared the car. Now, how how old was this car? You told me at one point <clears throat> this car was originally a wing car in 1969, and we had bought it from Soapy Castle, and and that's when they was already made them illegal. We turned it into a 70 Charger. Then I put a body on it, made it a 72, whenever the body change was, 72, 73, 74 charger. So it was uh, it was old nickel, nickel engineering, Nichols engineering car. It wasn't a petty. Now, the new car, the cars that we'd bought from Brooks, new to us, they wasn't new, but they was petty cars. So they yeah. was, they was you know, the, the, I feel like a better car because, of course, newer too. So it's an old, it's an old car. It's rough. And uh, so we get it get together and take it to the racetrack and before that I'm preparing it and you know I need to think about here I got a rookie that's I, I believe Dale had only ran one race there the 300 the year before and had never seen the racetrack except for that so got to try to make the race so I put everything in it that I could think of and we went on to the racetrack and 
back then. Go ahead. Sorry. How long was it from the point that your dad finally gave in? How long was that before the race? How long did you have to prepare the car? You know, I don't really remember the time frame. I, I believe it was a, you know, a couple of weeks before he ever forgave in, and I'm sure it was a couple of weeks before the race, maybe before that. I, I can't really remember. Maybe not that long because there's no way that we was. It had to be close. Maybe within a week, we needed to prepare it, get it ready. So that means getting another motor together, and because we built our own motors. And now, what kind of help was your dad? Was he was he supportive? Once he gave in, was he supportive or was he hands off? No, he was supportive. I mean, you know, he was when he was worried about his own car. I mean, he yeah. he's he's that's what we do for a living. So. You know, Charlotte back then, you'd have I probably, I don't remember how many cars there is, but usually there was at least 50 cars there trying to make a 40 car field, maybe more, a lot of times more. And I don't remember. So if if we don't make the race, we don't eat. I mean, that's the way it was. That's the way it, that's the way I grew up. We raced and, and got paid at the window when the race was over, got home, fixed the car, went back to the next one. You never waited on NASCAR to send you a check. You couldn't, you couldn't live without the money that you made that day. So, you know, I know we don't have the best motors. We don't have the best cars. So how are you going to – you just put everything you got into into this car to for Dale and I to try to make the world 600. Once your dad finally agreed to provide the car, what was Dale's outlook on the race? I mean, was he going – I don't want to say was he going to win, but what what was his outlook going into that race? Well, I was I, I I felt like his outlook was the same as mine. Make the race number one, start wherever we start, run as many laps as we can. It's six hundred miles. He's never seen nothing more than a three hundred. So is he going to last all day? You know, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so I mean, my outlook was just to try to get him to to last all day and, and run as many laps as we could, no matter how many laps we was down. And we was down a lot of laps. He came in a couple of times to fill up a water jug because he done sucked it dry. <laughs> so, I mean, this is under green, and I'm going, dude, get back out there. <laughs> I'll give you some water when you come in for pit stop. Now, was he was he struggling with, with going that far in that event? At the end of the race, he, he fell down beside the door, and he was whipped. Yeah. But, I mean – it's to be expected. I, I felt like I, I didn't expect him to, to look like the Dale Earnhardt we know as of today. Yeah, you know, yeah, and how yeah. tough he was. I mean, he was a tough kid. There's no doubt. But that's a long time. And I mean that. I know that car didn't handle the best. <laughs> I mean, he probably struggled with it all day long. In fact, I know he did. All right. So we have kind of danced around it a little bit. You've <laughs> mentioned a couple of times that in order to make the field, you, you basically threw everything you had at it, up to and including what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well it has been said that, uh, that, we, that, we, that we made the race with nitrous. Now, I, I'm not going to deny that. Um, back in them days, we, we had, I had made quite a few setups of nitrous that I had in our, my dad's cars. That they're in there. For one reason, and that's to make the race so we can eat, period. Yeah. Now, people may look at us, oh, y'all cheated. Well, we were not the only ones using this stuff. In fact, I know I wasn't. I wasn't the first one by far. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I put a setup in the car for Dale. Um, we, quali- we tried to qualify first, second, third day, last day, and turned the bottle on. So the- how did you put it in there? What? I had a setup that I had made up that uh, that uh, blew from the firewall, just a little juice right into the air cleaner. But it uh, the bottle was in the seat. I had it in the seat. He had to turn it on. Well, I turned it on, but he didn't really know where it was except he was sitting on it. And I had everything hidden. He just had to push a little button that I had hidden over on the side. And it, the, the bottle's small. I mean, and and, I, and all I want is two straightaways anyway. So I mean, it's empty when you're done. Yeah. So. 
it got us in the race, and that's what I, that's what we needed to do. How much did you pick up? Do you remember? I don't remember. Enough to make it. That's all. <laughs> we started thirty third, whatever. Yeah. Wherever. Yeah. Now, Dad, he started fortieth. <laughs> so we you out we out qualified Dad. I didn't I didn't have a I didn't have a nitro setup in his car. I'd use it in the hurts. <laughs> But he made. I thought he wasn't gonna make the race. We was gonna be really in trouble if he didn't make the race. In fact, he'd have probably had to started that. He'd have probably had to start the eight car that Dale yeah. was in for for yeah. points. Yeah. If he hadn't have made it, because we got to keep our points up. Now, what was your dad's reaction to get out qualified? By this, I don't think by it was no big kid. deal. He just he just happy we's made it. You know, once once we got him talked into it, he was he was on board to, you know. So he do he he was never like how. Oh. No, like, no. This ain't going to work. No, This ain't no, going to work, boys. <laughs> once we talked to him, in, no, but I mean, you know, Dad and Dale had a little bit of history before that. Dad had seen him run out to Concord, and, 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 and I told him some, you know, years before that when I went out and seen Dale run that that boy's going to be somebody one day, I think. But you don't know that. You're just guessing. Yeah. I just – I know that my dad ran dirt, and I feel like it may not be true today because because of everything they have to to, to play with on, on TV and stuff, but <laughs> – but I think a dirt driver's makes, you know, a heck of a race car driver on asphalt. So So once he got into the race, how how was he doing? He done good. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fixing to be 50 years ago. It's hard to remember that far back. But, um, we I just crew chief that race like I did any. I used a chalkboard with dad's name on it. In fact, dad's name was still on the side of the car. If you, you know, if, yeah. you, if you see when Dale done the, Dale Jr. done the, 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 the throwback at Darlington that time, but, um, uh, it was, uh, you know, he just went from making a, if there was a caution course we would come in and usually there was quite a few cautions back in. I don't know if we had them every, every time we pitted, we didn't, but Put a used set of tires on every time. He never had any new ones. He just tried to make it through the race. You you mentioned a second ago about um, him coming in and, and sucking the water jug dry. Oh, he done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> he done it. And I mean, you know, it was it yeah. was just one of them. You know, you just put it behind the seat and tape it to a roll bar and a tube coming up to your mouth and. He got me one time. I thought he had something wrong the first time anyway. And I'm going, I'm running out there with the chalkboard because that's all you had, no radios. We had, we did have one radio set, but dad was using it. You know, two radios, basically. We just got them. So, dad so had you didn't radio. have any kind of oh, radio? No, uh, but I mean, I never had any before that. It was, radios was just coming in for us to afford. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they was in some of the cars, but not, not very many at that time. Wow. So I'm, I'm from what I'm trying, I'm way out on pit road looking to see if there's a right side tire flat or something and there ain't and come in and he's I go to the wind and he says you gotta put water in this jug <laughs> I'm going man okay he wasn't leaving we had to put water in the jug so he was gonna sit there he was gonna sit there and he got some water <laughs> I mean you can't blame him I mean yeah. it's just you know it's either that or fall out of the seat <laughs> so you you finished I, I, 22nd. 22nd. 22nd, yeah. To tell, and I never really thought about this all these years, uh, but when you think back in 1975, World 600, there's a few things that happened that day that was, I think, pretty interesting when, when I think back on it. So Richard Petty had never won a World 600 till that day. Dale Earnhardt had never run a cup race in his life until that day. And the man that finished 23rd was Richard Childress that day. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't really make that up in 75 and, yeah. and turn out to what it became.